I was just asked an interesting question about CSS, something for beginners. I did not expect that CSS is very hard to learn. How long do you think a beginner like me will it take to fully understand CSS? I usually spend a half day just grasping the concepts of CSS, like display, position, layouting, and compared to JS, is CSS more difficult to learn? Uh, my short answer, it depends. CSS concepts are not that hard, but putting code to work, CSS code, can be because of the nature of the language, specifically the cascade in CSS and layout issues. So let me just uh, dive into this a little bit more. So CSS is a language of uh, layouts in web sites. Uh, it was initially designed to style documents and not create user interfaces. So one of the most tricky things about CSS is its layout uh, capabilities. Now this has been made much easier with CSS Grid and CSS Flexbox, of course, that changes the game. But there's also CSS libraries like Bootstrap, which are still something you can use that make it really easy. So that's number one, that's an issue. Number two, CSS has a, a very advanced way of being able to select things in your page, basically tags. Um, the selectors and the cascade, which is the hierarchy of the selectors, uh, can get very complicated. So CSS is short for cascading style sheets. Cascading is in reference to the way that CSS code can be used to target, uh, as I said, text and tags in your, uh, well, text and HTML tags in your web pages via a hierarchy, you know, a hierarchy like you got uh, generals and kernels and majors. You kind of have a similar hierarchy in CSS. That's the cascade. It, cascading mean you know, falls down like a cascading waterfall falls. So CSS rules when you say, for example, in CSS, we're going to make text red. That's a rule. Now, you can use the CSS cascade, the hierarchy, to specifically target things in your page. So you could say with CSS, you could say, all paragraphs inside of the article tag should have a color of red and they should be aligned to the left and they should use this font, for example. But the cascade could be used to be even more uh, fine controlled. You could also have another rule, but less control, less fine grained, if you will. So you have another rule that just says all text is red or all text is blue. But the cascade is a very advanced way of being able to select things in your page, like choose them out. So you could have a general rule in CSS that says, uh, let's select, let's make all text red. But you can have another rule that says, let's make all text inside of article tags that happen to be inside of a paragraph tag, let's make those blue. So what happens, for this is a very basic example, but what happens a lot of times, the coder will create a rule to say, let's make all the text red, and then they're wondering why, why is that paragraph blue? I don't get it, because they forget, they may have forgotten rather, that they had created another rule that was uh, further down the CSS cascade and it overrode the previous rule. Now, already I'm probably, people are going, oh boy, it's getting complex. You're right, it does get complex. So because of this complexity and this very precise capability that the CSS gives you, you have to really be careful about how you organize your CSS code so that, um, so that you don't run into these quirky little bugs. So there you go, how long will it take to learn? You can get your head wrapped around CSS within a week or so. Um, layout could be a bit more challenging, except, you know, uh, you could, you know, there's traditional layouts using floats and margins and paddings, which is the old school way, which you still see out there. The new school way is with CSS Grid, CSS Flexbox, something called CSS Tables, which people don't use. I teach that actually in my CSS3 course. And then you can use uh, frameworks like Bootstrap, which make it really easy for layout. This is all layout. Uh, so there you go. And now in terms of the cascade, in terms of the hierarchy of being able to select things in your page, I've just, just scratched the surface. There's so much more to that.
Um, you have to be careful not to get too cute with your CSS uh, selectors because uh, selectors, by the way, in CSS are just the code that you use to select things in your page. A thing could be a tag. It could be like uh, select all the P tags or select a particular P tag or select this text inside of a P tag, etc. It can get pretty complex. Now, it's very powerful, but at the same time, you can, uh, you can tie yourself up in all kinds of weird code. So keep that in mind. So yeah, a week you can get your head wrapped around the basics of CSS. You could probably get up some basic pages. Uh, to really fully understand, again, you have to concentrate on selectors and the cascade, which can take your time to could take time to hit, wrap around, get your head wrapped around. And also remember, CSS is a pretty big language, like so many other languages. So uh, you know, you don't have to know everything. You just have to know the key basics. So there you go. I hope that is useful for you. If you want to learn more about all the various languages out there, how they fit into the job market, you should click on the link below, which will take you to my mentoring page. And on there, you'll find a form where you can sign up for free for a free webinar. It's about 29 minutes on the coder career paths. It outlines all the different languages like JavaScript, PHP, uh, C Sharp, Python, uh, Java, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, C++. And it gives you an idea of where all those languages fit in the job market. I, can, I think most of you are interested in getting a job. So for example, if you're coding in C++, what kind of job can you expect? Where, what type of company can you expect to work for versus say JavaScript? JavaScript, totally different beast. They're both good languages, but the type of work you'll be doing, the type of coding you will be doing as a JavaScript programmer is very different from a C++ programmer. So again, just go on the link below, check out the studio web slash mentoring, and you scroll on that, you scroll halfway down that page, you find a form where you can uh, just subscribe to the newsletter and you get immediate access to this free webinar. Don't worry, I'm not gonna spam you with the newsletters. Uh, if anybody complains about my newsletters, I don't send enough, but I'm gonna be stepping that up I want people to sign up to the newsletter because I hear from so many people that they just don't get the notifications from YouTube. So I want a direct contact with the, the audience and you'll find exclusive content that I will not publish anywhere else for newsletter subscribers like this 29 minute webinar which is packed full of information. So that if you're new to coding or you're maybe just starting out, you wanna understand why would I wanna learn JavaScript for versus maybe C++ or maybe Python or maybe PHP? What does that mean in terms of jobs? What does that mean in terms of the type of work I'll be doing? That's the uh, a very useful video for you. So all right, thanks for watching, bye-bye.